Well, good morning, everyone at Carolina Weather Authority. I'm meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg. And if you've already gone outside this morning, it probably didn't take you much time to get a sweat going. I mean, I just went out to take some trash to the curb and, hmm, oh my goodness. We, um, we did get a bit of a hard downpour at my house in Garner last night. Got close to three quarters of an inch of rain, and that was just in a couple minutes. So, yes, we are definitely in that tropical air mass. Let's go ahead and take a look at our weather here, and yeah, I've shifted my webcam around, just got a lot of junk in my room I've got to store up while we're all working from home, but we'll get that figured out. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's have a look here at what's going on with our current conditions, and uh, thanks for joining our Facebook site, of course. Um, also, be sure to go to our Carolina Weather Authority page and check out all our articles. You'll see we've been talking about the cooler weather here in the middle of June. Uh, then the threat for some heavy rain coming in the next few days, and unfortunately it looks like this weekend as well. And uh, our chances for some maybe some rougher weather coming over the next couple of days. Do us all a favor real quick. Um, whoops, thought I had this up. Um, but on our YouTube page, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you already haven't. Let's take a look here at our satellite um, photo right now. <clears throat> here in the Carolinas, we do have some breaks in the cloud cover in the eastern parts of the state. Um, you can kind of see what's left of a front here that's kind of starting to wash up now, but that is uh, responsible for some of the showers and storms we've been getting in the afternoons and evenings. Um, and then a little more cloud cover rolling in from the west. This is our next weather maker, by the way. It's a double-barreled storm. Uh, the center of low pressure is here near Kansas City, Missouri. And this is the remains of Cristobal crossing Lake Superior into northwest Ontario. And both of them are bringing tons of moisture up from the south and southeast, so unfortunately the next couple of days are going to turn pretty wet here. Uh, the radar right now is fairly quiet in the Carolinas. We do have a few showers um, in the far western parts of these states, and I'm going to tell you to keep an eye on these later on today. They're going to start to move in our direction from the west. I say are, those of us in Charlotte and Raleigh, if you're already out here, you already know about that. Um, some heavier showers and storms in Louisiana from the remains of Cristobal, which is way up here, by the way and then uh, our circulation low pressure here in Missouri. So we're going to see some more active weather moving east. Um, it's been, I don't want to say it's been quiet here, but we haven't had anything too organized in the last few days. And if you were to take an average of the entire region in the first 10 days of June, um, we've actually been a little bit drier than average, even though some of you have had some heavier rain um, from time to time. It's just been a little more isolated. The Storm Prediction Center is uh, focusing on the eastern U.S. for some busy weather. Um, we do see a marginal risk in the western Carolinas later today and tonight. Uh, nothing widespread severe weather-wise, but there could be a few warnings later in the afternoon and evening. Could be some locally strong wind or hail. Uh, but this next storm rolling out of the north, out of the southwest to northeast, is likely to produce some severe weather later today and tonight in the Great Lakes region. And this is the first moderate risk we have seen since April in the U.S. This is across eastern Michigan, northern Ohio, uh, including Detroit and Toledo. Not going to be a problem for us, of course, uh, but I did want to bring your attention to that. If you have family up that way or maybe you're a transplant like I am. And tomorrow, um, a lot of that energy goes up into Quebec, and we are left with air mass thunderstorms, which could end up being strong to severe in the afternoon. Um, and I think our bigger threat is going to be heavy rain as well. Uh, as we look ahead to Friday, um, we still have a good chance of showers and storms in the eastern Carolinas, maybe the Midlands as well. Um, right now, the Storm Prediction Center is not predicting anything severe, but that could still change. Uh, but with the cloud cover expected, <clears throat> we could certainly um, have a few um, heavier cells. Rainfall in the last 24 hours uh, did pick up quite a bit in South Carolina. In fact, Columbia had almost two inches, and there were some areas south of Florence that did as well. My house in Garner is one of these little dots that got a lot, but Fayetteville didn't do too bad. But near Fort Bragg, there was a, actually a flash flood warning yesterday evening, so a couple inches fell there. And then, of course, the western Carolinas had some heavier rain. Charlotte got some rain as well, and, and those of you who stayed up late last night probably noticed that. Air you can wear again today. Dew points are expected this afternoon to climb well into the 70s. It's showing 70 in Raleigh, but I'm looking at 75 in my house. I don't think it's going to drop that much. So pretty much pretty darn humid again. No change there. Uh, rainfall expected to be, uh, this is, let's see, through Wednesday afternoon. Maybe some showers popping up here. I'm going to go ahead and animate this. This is from PivotalWeather.com, by the way. 
And we see those uh, precipitation amounts starting to climb in the Western Carolinas this afternoon and into this evening. And most of the action stays west of Raleigh and Fayetteville, by the way. Uh, maybe we get some rain overnight first thing tomorrow morning. Looks like it's wet between Charlotte and Greensboro and Raleigh. Uh, this is with our next cold front that I showed you. Uh, tomorrow, we're looking still at some rainfall um, across the Piedmont. It may try to dry out in Charlotte. You're kind of like right on the line. If you're west and north of Charlotte, chances are you're more likely to be dry than not. Maybe just a lingering shower. Uh, but I do want to bring your attention to the next wave coming up here in the afternoon tomorrow. Um, we're looking probably at some heavier thunderstorms. Um, even if there's no lightning, there'll be some heavy rainfall. And this is tomorrow afternoon. And tomorrow evening gets pretty intense, according to this model. <clears throat> and then right on through tomorrow night, we are once again looking at some slow-moving rain. And at this point, I think the, the flash flood threat does start to climb. So if you have plans to travel tomorrow night, um, across the central and eastern Carolinas, especially inland around I-95 or even US-1, be prepared as I do think we could have some heavy rainfall. Friday, we still have this front in our hair. We've been talking about this all week. It may try to creep a little farther east. And the beaches could start getting wet in the afternoon. Uh, close call, of course. Uh, but the area of heavy rain is focused basically um, across the eastern Carolinas, inland areas especially. And um, we'll take a look into Saturday here, and unfortunately, it still stays wet. Um, this area of rain, the models have been kind of back and forth. Is it Raleigh and Columbia? Is it Wilmington and Myrtle or Char uh, Charleston? I don't know why I'm not talking right. Maybe it's the beaches, so your weekend could be spoiled at the beaches. I would say get it out of the way today if you can, really. Uh, but yeah, we're looking wet, unfortunately. Um We'll, we'll skip past that. We'll look at total rainfall from the GFS model. And yesterday morning, there was an area of five, six, seven inches up in Raleigh today. We're still expecting that heavy rain. Um, the latest model run shows maybe some six inch amounts southeast of Sumter and south of Florence. So you get the point. It's going to rain pretty hard in some areas here. Really tough to say where exactly. Um, so overall, a two to three inch rainfall east of Raleigh and Columbia is, is expected. You know, the beaches may avoid most of that through the weekend. It's it's a close call. Um, this could very well easily end up farther east or west. If the front ends up 30 miles on one side or the other, that's going to make a pretty big difference. The European model uh, is actually kind of swapped with the GFS. We really got some, some heavy amounts of rainfall, uh, four, five, six inches amount. And this is kind of in tune with yesterday morning's GFS model. So they've kind of swapped uh, places, but they still show that heavy rain threat. Uh, so you've probably read in our articles before, you know, locally strong thunderstorms that sit and train over the same areas could produce quite a bit of rain. So if a 7-inch falls, I am not going to be completely shocked. If you're up in Virginia, too, you got to be watching out. Um, we've had uh, some pretty high rivers from last month, and all that's going to drain our way. So we may have some floods again, unfortunately. Uh, is it going to be as bad as it was, you know, at the end of, of May and with Bertha coming up? Probably not. But... You put a few inches of rain on top of a high river and you can still have problems. So be prepared for that. Temperature forecast here. Um, as we look, currently we are still seeing some above average temperatures by a shade. Uh, this is up at 850 millibars, but you know, pretty much translates down to the ground at this level. Uh, but you can see west of the Carolinas, there's cooler air arriving tomorrow on Thursday morning. Uh, it stays warm ahead of the boundary, but now we start to wipe out the warmth by Friday. And with the cloud cover and rain, uh, we should see some cooler than average temperatures right on into Sunday and Monday. The really cool air is up here in the mid-Atlantic region, north of uh, Richmond. And this is Monday of next week. So we are going to get a break on our AC bills. We've been talking about this for the 15th, 16th, 17th, so early next week. And then eventually we moderate to near or above average by Father's Day weekend, maybe another shot of cool coming down. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be a nice refreshing change for us. We may only have some days that get to about 80 in the afternoon or even upper 70s. Depends on if it's cloudy or not. And uh, we may have some nighttime lows in the 50s and 40s even in the mountains. So I'm excited about that, guys. Tropics are fairly quiet now. The remains of Cristobal heading up across Lake Superior. This area probably not going to develop at this point. So the next five days are looking good. We are going to have to keep an eye on the Western Caribbean um, for maybe a, a weak disturbance developing, maybe a depression or storm. 
Um, at this point, with a uh, big high pressure coming down our direction early next week, should not be a problem for the Carolinas. We're going to have um, a lot quieter weather pattern overall next week, which is great. Um, I think the biggest question we're asking ourselves is how long is this next system going to be in our hair? Is it going to be here through Sunday and Monday? Is it going to leave? Some models say it's out of here on Sunday, and others say it's around till Tuesday morning. So we'll keep you posted on that, folks, but make sure to CYA with CWA. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out our page, and uh, looking forward to uh, keeping you guys protected from any strong storms. We'll post the latest at, uh, as much as we can. Have a great day, everyone.